What you see here is one of the first uh, UX wireframes we used for um, getting into Jam and you know creating an idea of how we will work with Jam and uh, about the interaction with the hardware. This was way before the first um, hardware was even produced, so we were actually working like kind of with pen and paper. And, um, and we agreed on early prototyping, and that means that we had an early prototype, which is this one, which is basically um, a jam on a touch screen. Where kind of some of the features were implemented already, so we could use them, test them with users as well, and um, yeah, see if our assumptions of a nice interaction um, meets their user needs. And um, well, from then on, we frequently try to have user testing sessions somewhere a bit smaller and dealing with some areas like, for example, the parameter on screen overlay and somewhere even hosted in LA and also London um, to get a holistic usability feedback from the users. And um, then we also invited like non-machine users, machine users, people from every entry level um, to get a picture of what those guys actually think um, about what we've done so far. Yes, thank you. Uh, great wrap up. And um, yeah, so while they were doing that, um, I was working on design details. So for example, there's this D-pad on that unit, and we made like lots and lots of different versions of that. So uh, here you see some renderings. I did a lot of like shit little printouts in pink uh, to just try out how they feel, what works, and then we ended up with what we have on the unit. Um, while I was doing this, the electrical engineers came up with that piece of art. And um, what many people don't know is that all this um, routing, basically drawing the connections between the electronic parts is made by hand. This is actually uh, really three months uh, worth of work and I think it's uh, fair to shed a little bit of light on that because it's usually buried in the unit, nobody sees it, but I think it's beautiful. So, yeah? See it enough? Okay. <laughs> so, while that is happening, the mechanical engineers um, basically prepare the construction to that point that we say, okay, it's ready, we're going to start to cut metal. And what we do is we make this mold for the plastic part, and that is really one of the biggest invest investments when it comes to uh, making hardware. What you see here is about three tons and costs, yeah, like Mercedes C-Class or something. So um, just to give you an idea what, what, how the machine looks that makes the machine, um, and, uh, yeah, I won't go into details, which I could elaborate a lot on, but um, I want to uh, go right onto the, touch upon the design language. And uh, for that, it would be cool if you could um, look at the unit that I have right in front of me. So, um, What is clear is that it has a lot of machine language going. So we have the flat bezels going on, we have this acrylic spanning across the unit that you know from, for example, Machine Studio. And, um, but we also um, set up a really strong boundary, which is that Machine Jam should work perfectly um, alongside Mark II. So I brought a Mark II to demonstrate something, which is it's the exact same form factor, but they're very different units. So um, this unit has about um, 115 buttons, uh, over 90 um, LED segments, a touch strips, a knob, <laughs> and that's a lot of functionality on that small footprint. So what we did to organize this beautifully is we segmented it with these lines. I don't know, can you see these lines slightly? So these lines that are engraved into the unit, um, we call them shadow gaps, and they uh, really um, organize the unit very well. We, we form functional grouping with that. So we have the center part with these channel strips that uh, were very well um, uh, uh, 
explained by Boris. But and then we have all this control stuff on the sides. And, uh, uh, um, and what we get is a really very, very symmetric thing. So in order to, to break the symmetry a little bit and give it a little bit more energy, we created this field up here. So this thing, when it plays, it gives the unit direction, like the music is pumping out of there. No need for the audio. I, don't, I was just here to play. I don't want to <laughs> um, uh, want to take uh, away uh, your focus, because what's really interesting about these um, these these lines is that they really span all across the unit. So I brought this extra unit just to show you how they're spanning over all sides. Like we have them here. We have them on the back. We even have them on the feet. And um, yeah, it's, uh, uh, they, they also conceal basically where the top part and the bottom part come together. I think it's a really neat idea to bring this whole thing together. It's kind of like the design theme, the shadow gap here. Um, but uh, enough of that boring stuff. I don't know, or is it boring? No? <laughs> Thank you. Then I will elaborate on. No, I won't. <laughs> um, actually, I got some more exciting and interesting stuff for you because now we're going to... Uh, we're going to shed some secrets. Secret time. So, the first one is just a little one. Um, it's basically, you know, how I just showed you the mold. Like, you actually can do little, little personal things in molds. And so my little personal thing is I put a, a little detail. It says jam on it. So. And since this thing is new, I don't want you to void the verity. I'm showing sure you here. Um, so that, that was my little secret. But there's a much cooler one that Hauke is going to present to you. So please. Yes, we're yes. serious about this. He's going to punch in the secret Konami code. And yes, it's Snake. <laughs> And that's what, what that's when you lose. So you see, we love what we do, and we li like to give our products a lot of love, and it's really um, heartfelt. And uh, yeah, wait, that's it from us. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you.